Hello, District 13 Senior Division Clarinetist. This is your prepared etude. Okay, um, so I think one of the very first questions most people want to know is how fast you're going to play this thing. And Allegro is not a specific tempo marking. It, it really is a wide range. I mean, there's, that's true of every tempo marking. Um, and so you need to choose to play it at a tempo that's going to make you look good. If you're going to play, if you play faster than you're able, it just is going to sound rushed and scrambling. And so if you find yourself um, having to choose, it, it's better to choose a slower tempo that you are more in command of, and then to make sure that you play it with a lot of style. Um, as long as you play it with a lot of character, it's going to sound exciting, which is what we want, right? So here are some little tips for other details in the piece after, after the tempo consideration. Accented notes. Accented notes, uh, accents are bursts of wind. Yeah, I mean, you can like, you know, tongue extra hard if you want to, but it really is a burst of wind. And one way to concentrate on developing your accents is to simply play a note like that's piano or pianissimo, and then uh, make yourself accent with just your core muscles. It should be the same kind of feeling as if you cough <coughs> or if you're laughing. Um, it's just a flex of the core muscles, that's what it is. And the, um, the trick that goes along with that is to make the notes around the accented notes less. So in the first four measures here, we're supposed to be forte, right? But if you go back and listen, when we're in measures two and three, I don't really play anything forte except for the accents. Um, so concentrating on making your accents just a burst of wind and your non-accented notes much softer than the accented notes will help you create really nicely defined accents. Articulation. So there are very specific places in which the composer has asked for staccato, and I will give them the staccato there and pretty much nowhere else. It's tempting to play. But if you make everything staccato, then the staccato things aren't special. And so... I actually kind of did that wrong. I played the 16th note staccato. You're trying to show the judges that you can make the difference between the articulation uh, articulations that are asked for. Um, and so for that reason, I think, yeah, I'm going to give them a staccato everywhere they say. And most other places, I'm going to leave it fully legato. I mean, unless I really feel musically like it should be separated. Um, the rhythm of measures five and six is tricky. And for most of you, the issue is going to be holding the tie too long. So a couple things that you can do to prepare this, use a metronome, use a metronome, <laughs> use a metronome. But additionally, you could tongue the subdivision at a tempo you feel comfortable. So each one of these ties is three sixteenth notes long. that you got the rhythm exactly right. Um, additionally, the tonguing here is a little little tricky. Ta, 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 ta. So you have to be picky about that as well. And you have to be picky about that throughout the piece. Um, in measure six, for example, it's, it would be tempting to, to make uh, the last two sixteenth notes a slur too as well. 
Because it would kind of fit, but you know, they want to see whether you can jump through that hoop gracefully. So you need to give it attention. I think that for most, most of you, the measure that's going to decide what tempo you play the piece of music is going to be measure nine. And I've got a couple, couple tricks here for you. Because usually, most of you, the problem is going to be one, this, the problem is either going to be the leaps up and back, <laughs> you know, and having your fingers really well coordinated, or it's going to be rushing the, or both. <laughs> so I think this is a really useful measure to approach several different ways. The very first that I would suggest is just beat segments. So. slurring it so that you can really hear what your fingers are doing would be really excellent. And make sure that your are nice and clean because that's likely to be one of the reasons why it bogs down. Uh, also would be very useful to uh, make the beat segments a little longer so like playing the first six notes of the measure so that you include the leap up to the beat and the leap back down and then playing the next six notes from beat two so that would go like this okay um rhythm games i mean this 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 measure needs to be worked out many different ways so that you feel comfortable um i then think that your biggest priority is figuring out how to make this sound musical and expressive uh, within the guidelines of what we've been given by Mr. Fagan. Um, for example, 10, 11, 12, we are in forte, but there are no dynamic indicators whatsoever. So clearly it would be a mistake to do this. So, I mean, all of that's right but it's kind of boring um, and it can be played many, many different ways. You know, you can, you can put crescendos and diminuendos anywhere in it and, and find a satisfying way for you to be expressive. And if you do so, the judges are going to like you for it. Okay. Whether you play everything exactly the way you want or whether there's some mistakes, they'll like the fact, they'll love the fact that you give them some music to listen to it. It's, it's kind of key. Um, in large part, I think that, that those are the big things that I would be focused on. There are a couple other little problem spots that I want to point out to you. Uh, measure eight, the last three accents, you might be able to get away without accenting the high C because just the leap up to the high C is going to sound like an accent. Um, so maybe you don't need to over focus on using that, that high C there. In measure 14, most clarinet players are going to have a problem coordinating the A to the F or the F to the A. So that's this because we're, we're having to coordinate the, the fast finger on our dominant hand, or for most of us, the dominant hand, and the ring finger of the dumb, uh, of the ring finger on the left hand. And so frequently We'll have a, a blip in between that F and the A. And so you could work that out by simply adding some F A reps in the middle of that beat. I think uh, maybe the last detail again has to is related to an accent in the last two measures is is pulling off a diminuendo but still graciously accenting the last the last note because as we leap down from the high C there's a built-in diminuendo there as we're dropping you know down that sixth right even if you kept the wind pretty steady most people are going to hear a diminuendo so I mean I might suggest that once you get down to that E to not diminuendo much more and just leave leave yourself the room for the nice accent But 
these are just some thoughts, uh, creative things that you come up with that, that will help you enjoy the music and help you play in a way that is, um, is, is satisfying to you is w and also playing a tempo that you are comfortable with. Those two things together. Playing in a way that is satisfying to you and that uh, is at a tempo that you are in charge of is what is going to score you the most points. Okay? Uh, good luck with your audition and, uh, and I, I hope this is helpful.